I'm gonna show you how to set up the Netflix Conductor open source project on your local machine. Before we get started on the install, I wanna share a couple of things real quick. These are some requirements. You need to have Docker set up on your local machine. You're gonna to have to have a JDK of 17 or greater, um, and you need Node 14 at least. Earlier versions might work of Node, but they haven't really been tested, and that's needed specifically to run the graphic UI. All right, we're gonna start off on the Conductor open source page in GitHub, and from there, we're gonna go into the Conductor repo itself. There are other repos here with other projects, but we'll get to that in a different video. All right, here is the Conductor project itself. If I scroll down to the readme, there's a lot of good information in this readme, requirements and other things. We're gonna stick primarily in this getting started area. All right, next I'm gonna go over to my VS Code window. If you don't have VS Code installed, you could install IntelliJ or any other ID of your choice. I just happen to have this. And for now, I'm gonna click on Terminal, open up a new terminal, and I'm gonna put this into my local documents folder, but you could put it wherever you want. So I will CD into my documents folder here on my Mac. Once I'm there, I'm gonna do the git clone. Now, you could either type out the URL for the repository or just copy it. I will copy and paste it for you to make things a little simpler. We'll go back to GitHub. I'm gonna copy that URL. I will paste it here, hit enter, give that a moment, and you will find that the clone has completed. Fantastic. Now, on my local Mac, there's a conflict with the build in that my Mac is already using port 5000, which is a default for conductor. So I'm gonna go in and change the Docker compose file um, so that we can prep it before we get everything started. I will click on the file explorer, open folder, open my documents, open conductor, and you will see everything from conductor here. Fantastic. I'm gonna scroll down to the Docker folder and go to the docker-compose.yaml file. And you'll notice right here under ports, it's pretty quick here at the top. Under ports, you'll see 5,000, 5,000. That is the default for running the graphic user interface. I'm going to change this to say 5050. That way the conductor server, that a conductor that is presented to me on my local machine is running a port 5050, and it can stay at port 5,000 indicated here inside the container. So I will save that. And then here, I'm gonna open up my terminal again, since I did switch windows there. Um, I'm still in the conductor folder, as you can see here in the in this example. And again, for the sake of brevity, um, I'm gonna go back to the repo. And right here, we have the Docker Compose statement you need. You may already know Docker Compose and how to run that. And if you don't, if you do, that's fantastic. And if you don't, you can just click on this copy button. We'll go back to VS Code. I'm gonna paste that into the terminal. And this is gonna basically launch the Docker Compose process to build the container. I'll hit enter. Give that a moment. All right, things are running. Now, while this stuff is running, there's a couple of ways you can verify when it completes and that things are functioning properly. I will switch over to my Docker desktop and you can see here that the container has started. It's got a partial showing running. Two of three have two of three of the containers have built. You can see them with green lights here. Awesome. Um, the third container, which is the conductor server itself, which is what is presenting both the graphic interface for conductor as well as the Swagger um, API docs. Um, that's what we'll need up and running so we can interact with either of those depending on how you want to build and how you want to configure conductor. Now, looking at the screen, turn green, fantastic. So we know that the whole, all the containers are running. I'll switch back to VS Code and you can see there's a bunch of other activity happening here, but I think we've got enough to go check and see if uh, conductor is actually functioning for us. So I'll go back to Chrome and we saw the ports a minute ago, so I'm gonna open up my local host 5050 because that's what I wanna look at for the graphic interface. Let's take a look. Awesome. So we can see the conductor is working. There's some stuff that's still loading, but that doesn't really matter to us right now. We could do searches. There's no records to display because this is the search executions screen, so we haven't executed anything. It's a brand new build. We could click up to the top up here and go to definitions. This is where we would build out our first workflow. If I click on tasks, there's already a bunch of default tasks built in. It looks like around right here, around 41 tasks are already pretty built in the system that you could work with to start off. Um, and just to test this, I'll click on the workflows tab, click on new workflow definition here. Let me move my image so you can see this. In the upper right corner or middle right corner, I'm gonna click on new workflow definition. And you can see we have a basic workflow already begun with the JSON here on the left that is very basic, very default, and you can start configuring from here. Next, let's double check and make sure that the API itself is working. So I'm gonna go to localhost, obviously my local machine, and that's on port 8080. Hit enter and voila, here we go. 
We've got the main page here, user guide and the Swagger documentation. Let's go to Swagger, because that's where we can see the API. I'll move my image for you again so it's easier to see. And you can see all of the different API endpoints that are available to you through this document. And that's it. Conductor open source is now running on your local machine and you can build, begin to build custom tasks, workers if you want to, or you can just start right away and create your own custom workflow. And once you're done, take a look at the remainder of the readme file for links to the documentation, both the API docs, developer docs, and the getting started guides. You can also see below uh, links to our various developer communities, Slack and Discourse and other places.